So you wanted to know the one feature in Vim that will speed up your code editing, take your productivity to the next level, and change the way you think about text editing. Well, in this video, we're going over Vim Macros, a game-changing feature of Vim that will take your coding skills to new heights. Now, of course, later in the video, I'm going to talk about all of the tips and tricks I've learned about Vim Macros. But for now, of course, we got to learn just the basics of what even a macro is and how we can create and use a very simple macro. So macros in Vim work by letting you record your keystrokes, then you're able to run the macro, which runs the set of keystrokes you recorded. So first, you start with pressing Q in normal mode, along with a second character, which in this case, uh, I press W, which means that now we're recording a macro to our W key. Now I can do anything I want in Vim, like let's say, I can type in this is from my macro and let's say we create two new lines and then of course in normal mode go back to normal mode press q to end the macro now to run our macro we just press shift 2 and then the key we recorded the macro to which in this case was w and you'll see that it runs all of the keystrokes at once that we've recorded so here you can see we have another line that says this is a line from my macro. If we press shift two, then W, you can see that it runs the macro. Yo, real quick, if you find this video helpful at all, I would really appreciate if you sub to the channel to see more videos of mine like this. All right, back to video. All right, so here I just have a small example of some code. Let's say we want to create a macro that would just take a line that prints out some text, a string, and we instead replace it with a line that prints out the string in this format with the two dashes. So here, we can start recording our macro, let's say Q and I press A, so to, to record on the A key. And when creating a macro, you should really be thinking about what line you're doing it on and what is the outcome that you want to happen. So for this example, we're starting on a line with CL, a string, and then and L. So we should expect that we only run this macro on uh, a line similar to this, where we'll get the same result because it's in the same format. So in this example, uh, let's just say we go to the front of the line, we search for a uh, double, was it double quotation mark and we can insert in two dashes uh, and then we can search for the second double quotes and we can insert two dashes here and let's just end our macro by pressing q and we've recorded the macro so now if we run uh, at sign shift 2 and we press a you'll see that we'll do the same thing on this line right and you can run on every, every line you know this can be very useful but still it can be a bit tedious to go through and run the macro on every line right so what you can do is you can highlight all the lines you want to run your macro on and enter command mode while having all of this highlighted and the command you want to run is normal I spelled that wrong normal and then at or shift to and the name or whatever key you recorded the macro to so in this case is at a see when we press enter here we run the command it'll apply the macro to all of the lines we have selected and this is because the normal command takes in a set of keystrokes that will it'll run on these lines so we have you know if we have all of these selected we type normal say at the end just type in some stuff you see it runs the same thing on all of these lines so that's why we're able to run our macro so pretty much it just runs the macro on every line and let's say we want to create a macro that will you know create some sort of 
declaration for these functions. So let's say, again, when you're creating a macro, you should focus on the line you start on and focus on what format that line has and what result you want and then what outcome. So in this case, we start on a line with uh, just a function call and our outcome should be a declaration for the function. So here, let's say we start recording a macro, we can you know, select and copy the name of our function that we call, it doesn't exist yet. And let's say we go down, we type void and just create a void function with the name that we call. And let's say we stop recording our macro. Now, when we run our macro on a line that's similar or has the same format, you'll see that we get the same outcome, except now with the different names. All right, so let's just go over another quick example of situation where macros can be very useful. So here we just have Rust file, we have a struct car with some fields, and in our main function, we have a car called my car. And let's say we want to print out all the fields with this specific format. So to do this, we can start by going to our line that we want to create a new line that will print out the field of the car, and we'll just start on field we want to create a new line for this for, um, which is here for the year. And we can start by recording our macro, let's say to W, so Q, W, and this starts recording on W. So I think we'll just take the uh, name of the fuel. We'll go down and paste it in, and let's say we want to print line, my car dots, and let's just leave this blank for now. We're gonna go back, get the field, we can capitalize this, insert everything, and then at the end, we can end our macro. So now we've started recording a macro on this line, all right, for a year, and in the macro, we create a new line that will print out uh, the value of whatever field we want. So now if we run the macro, but now starting at this third field, you can see that it creates the line and in the format that we want. So we do this for this field, we can do this, and we can actually use our normal W here, and it will do it with every single line. So, and even if we and have all these, let's just see it do it all at once. Let's see normal at W. You see that we get all of the lines at once with the macro.